Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to cover what a game design document is and how important it is to have this to start your game. And uh, this uh, piece here, this video is going to be slightly different. I'm just going to really just talk more about the process of what is required for a doc game design document. And as we go through this couple pointers, just remember, you don't have to have all this filled out at the very beginning. Uh, you can kind of come back to it once you kind of have a better idea of it. But this is a guideline of how to keep your stuff organized, okay? So let's jump into this and start with why a game design document. Uh, games take a lot of work and it's very important to know that a lot of projects just in general never get complete because the last like 10 to 5 to 10 percent will take just as much work as it did to get to that point. And a lot of the stuff that happens is, you know, organization and things of that nature. And, you know, there are other things that could delay games and so forth, like bugs and so forth. But uh, the most uh, crucial piece, especially when you're first starting off and building games, is you don't want to change your idea towards the end or try to add a cool new feature you think that's going to be great, but you never even implemented it yet. Because what it does is it creates a ripple effect and so forth. So this document itself is going to demonstrate that you're one, organized, and you could get your game funded if you pitch it to investors and so forth, if that's something you want to do. And it also allows your team to communicate with each other based on how large it is. Uh, games that you're doing individually or with two people, you may not need to communicate via a document because you could just talk with each other, but as teams grow and grow, it's harder to manage. And sometimes this document is uh, a way to help make sure everyone is going down the right path. So why do games fail? So uh, it's important to know, bugs towards the end of development are a main piece. Super huge, and it is something that is uh, you kind of have to look out for, but you can't really, it, it's just going to happen, okay? Um, but some of these bugs are generated based off of you adding a feature way past when you should even think about adding any of these items. So that's the kind of stuff that is important to understand when we do this, all right? And uh, the other reason is... Uh, Organ being organized and strict to what your game is actually doing, all right? So this just kind of goes back to the whole bug piece as well. Uh, I'm picking a couple things of why games fail. There's a million other reasons that it could fail, like running out of money, things of that nature. However, if you're organized, the chances of it not failing is higher. And that's important to understand because uh, if you're strict with features and you're like, you know what, if this game has multiple updates and so forth you could then create a game that has you know the base pieces of it to work and then once it's fully functioning you could then go out and get investors kickstart it things like that to then add all those other things you want to add to make this whole complete game so um a lot of the time we just lose out on manpower hours and uh, you run out of money at the end of the day it's really hard to work on games when one, people are not getting paid, and two, if this is something that is outside of you just doing it on your own free time. And this, the, the last piece is mostly geared towards uh, larger groups that are developing games. If you're a solo or working with another person, you could have different situations where you both could have day jobs while you work on this game and so forth. So the whole running out of money might not fit there, but it is one of the reasons why games tend to halt in development and things of that nature. So the game design document is more of our living document, okay? And living meaning that it just keeps changing, growing over time, and uh, it could change uh, mechanics, uh, story could be added or changed later on and things of that nature. And this is where we write all that down. All right. The goal is you as the creator developer of this game need to be able to articulate yourself and put it down on a document. If you can't do that, 
then people who come in to join your team in that will have to rely on being able to talk with you. And the thing is, you're not going to always be available for them to chat with. So this is where this document is, where you put all your stuff down. That way, then it's the living document that we all reference moving forward. So what does this actually include? There is a ton of things that this includes. OK, uh, project scope. Uh, you could add your elevator pitch in here. How you're going to make money. Uh, is it with ads? Well, whatever you're doing, uh, your game concept story. You got your genre. You got your target audience. You got your game flow summary. You got the look and feel, which, you know, inside of that could be the art direction flow and just the general feel of what you want your game uh, game uh, players want, want to feel and so forth. And then you got the actual gameplay. How do you progress in the game? Missions, challenges, if that's the type of structure your game has. What are the objectives? Uh, the play flow. Play flow is just, <laughs> we'll talk more in detail with this, but um, you know how you get your players to play through the game. Uh, what are the mechanics? Uh, are there physics involved in here? Is there some sort of combat uh, feature to this? Are, uh, are there characters? Are there levels? Is there an interface of some sort? Is there a visual system, audio, help system, target, hardware? Like, what do you want to put this on? And any other kind of key assets. And uh, just to let you know, like, this list here that I just ran through, you do not need to have all of these in there. These are just ones that if your game actually fits it, you should talk about it. Okay? And uh, so, for example, if you don't have combat, you probably shouldn't have a combat section in there. But uh, um, this is, shows you that you could add a ton of components to documents like this. Okay. So what we're going to do is talk about, okay, well, what do I need and why do I need them? So we're just going to go over these items and talk about it uh, a little bit, uh, one by one. So let's start with project scope. Okay. So this is where you kind of talk about like how big this game is. Is there a budget? Is there a timeline? These are the things that are super important for you to kind of lay out ahead of time. Because if you have no scope to your game, it may take years for you to get done. All right. What you, everybody on the team needs to be invested in knowing I am going to dedicate X amount of time to get this game done. All right. And it's huge because if you don't agree on this, what happens is everyone starts off all in and then all of a sudden, People start dropping off and things of that nature, or they're too busy because they have to, you know, uh, work at their day job or whatever is going on. And we just want to avoid some of those things. OK, uh, so we talk about it in the scope. That way, then everybody understands, OK, this is what the commitment is in order for us to make this game happen. Right. Life will always happen. But this is that guiding piece. All right. Uh, elevator pitch. I uh, like to add this into my documents just because you never know when someone's like, hey, I'm interested in the type of game you're building. How can I help? I was like, all right, cool. Uh, people who are out and about talking about your game and so forth could look at what are some of the items that you want to talk about when you pitch the game, right? We want to make sure that whoever is talking to people, uh, getting them excited and maybe looking for funding explains your game in the most appropriate way all right if everyone says something slightly different about your game you you don't know what they said if they kind of just thought of it at the spot and so forth and you know so this kind of helps them have a script to at least to start with okay and then uh monetization how to make money on your game this is huge because most of us would want to make money on our game unless you're just wanting to get your game out there. And while that's totally fine, you don't need this section, but you could talk about how you want to add uh, ads if you want to just make it straight paid. Is it for mobile or what are you going to do? Are you going to just put it onto Steam? Or like these are these options you have in order for you to generate income and so forth. And if you're really wanting to pitch this, and have investors, you have to have this part, okay? The next piece is game concept and story. What is happening in your game, 
All right. So at first, I would just encourage you guys to talk, write about like a paragraph or two about the whole point of your game. And what you can do is if you have a lot of information, like a huge narrative, like pages of information, backstory of characters or whatever the case is, you could just link each section from here. You don't want to necessarily have 30 pages of just gameplay concepts right at the beginning of this document. You, it's best to link them so then everyone could see the general pieces. And the nice thing is you could also add a table of contents at the beginning of this document so people could click to where they need to get to. So genre itself is next. It's what kind of genre is it? What kind of game is this? Uh, this helps you understand what your marketing strategy can be, uh, who you're focusing on and so forth. And that goes into target audience. Uh, for the most part, uh, a lot of us will come up with an idea and go, oh, it's for this group of individuals. You know, let, let's say I want to make action adventure. Okay, cool. So well, how, what, what's the age range? Uh, what, uh, who loves playing those types of games more and so forth? And you're like, I know this. However, sometimes that changes based on how the game actually plays, what the story is. Is it more story driven than not? Uh, some folks don't care too much for stories when it's high intense action maybe, right? So this is where uh, you, you'll probably take your first best guess on the audience, but through beta testing and so forth, you will most likely change this to kind of uh, hone in on a, a small group of folks that you know you need to target. And this will then help your marketing out, how you go out there, what kind of ads to buy to promote your game and stuff like that. Uh, game flow summary. This is just pretty much how the game pro progresses. It's important to understand how and what drives each player to keep playing your game. So this is where that goes, right? If, uh, for example, if you're playing something that is uh, like a Metal Gear Solid-esque, people play those games because they're more driven by the story and the stealth and things of that nature, right? Um, if someone who didn't care for a story in that jumps into a game like that, they probably wouldn't play the whole game. Now, uh, it's a big time game, so a lot of people will just try it anyways, but everyone knows a lot of those games require you to uh, navigate through tons of narrative and so forth. And that's something that you like. This is what you write about in the game flow summary to make sure uh, everyone's on the same page of what to expect for this. So then the look and feel itself is next. And what art direction do you want it to go towards? Uh, you could always start with a couple ideas. Uh, you know, if you're like, oh, I want a watercolor style background. Is it 2D? Is it 3D? Uh, what are you really trying to do, right? Like, let's say if it's like a graphic novel game or something that's more like open world exploration. Those are two different looks and feels, right? So this is where you kind of narrow that down based on what your story is about and what you're trying to really create. Then that goes into gameplay and it's just understanding what type of play does your game have, right? Is it a hack and slash game, a puzzle game, an RPG, action adventure? These are just some of those things that you can kind of look at and figure out, is this what your game is? Maybe it's a cross between a couple. This is where you write that down and you kind of define all those pieces. That way then everyone knows coming in, okay, this is the type of game that we're making. Game progression. How do you level up? How do you get someone to move forward in the game? Is it through uh, some of the missions, challenges and so forth or anything else? So that goes to the next part, mission challenge structure. Do you want to progress based off completing missions, uh, certain ranks, things like that? Or is it just all objective based where you have to complete a certain amount of tasks or certain things in order for you to get to the next level or the next area of the game? So there's a lot of ways of how you can talk about objectives, mission challenges in order for you to talk about game progression as well. So they kind of all group together when we look at this stuff, okay? 
play flow. This is where you describe the flow of your game and how do they go from one level to level. And it's very similar to the three before. However, uh, this is where you get to kind of go a little bit more in detail on how they actually go to the next level, right? Whereas the objectives, you could talk about more about the different types of objectives you'll have in the game. You know, you could have primary, secondary, and so forth, or optional ones, things like that, because there's a ranking system you may have or stuff like that. So Playflow is here as well to talk about that. And if you wanted to, you could combine a lot of these together, okay? And then we talk about the mechanics of the game. How do we control whatever we're controlling and how do we make sure uh, we let the players know what is allowed and what's not, right? So for example, if you're playing a game where you're able to fly and well, okay, well, how do you fly? Are you in an aircraft? Are you just with magic? Uh, what What's going on there, right? And is there something that tells us how we control the character when we're in a flying mode or whatever the case is? And then we talk about physics. What do we have going on here? Are we using the physics of the, the Earth, right? Are we going to have gravity? What are we trying to do here? Okay. And the, the cool thing about this is you get to kind of decide what type of physics you want to implement and you could implement all sorts of stuff, right? So uh, this goes into, does it fit your story, your mechanics? Can you make all this happen? All right. And it's always great to add any kind of formulas you may be using or anything like that uh, for this stuff. And now we have combat where we talk about, does, does your character actually need to be able to fight or your NPCs and what is that system? So uh, the combat section can get pretty long if you are uh, doing an RPG or anything that requires elements like, you know, earth, fire, wind, water, earth, and all that, light and dark, uh, things like that, where you are uh, trying to create like a checks and balances and so forth. So this is a section that you kind of really dive into that. Like, can you shoot something? Does it require magic? Does it require some type of fuel? What are the things that are necessary for you to, you know, progress via like destroying enemies or whatever you're trying to do here? Okay. Characters. Who are your characters? Super important. That's where you list out all your playable and non-playable characters, right? And what they can do and so forth. If they have dialogue, if, they, if they're non-playable characters and they need dialogue and so forth, you could link out to different uh, documents where it's just that player's uh, dialogue and what they go through on every click and so forth, especially if you're doing like a traditional RPG or something like that. And, uh, or even in like platforming games when you have shopkeepers and so forth. Uh, then levels. What are the levels in your game? How many do you have? What types are there? Like, this is where you get to kind of dive in and talk about what the art direction and the flow of your game the levels and how they need to be designed, right? So if it's a platforming game, is it supposed to be something that's more retro, uh, something that's more 3D realism? Like, what are you going for, right? So the levels here, you wanna break them down, talk about what each level is going to do, what's it gonna look like, uh, what's the objectives, things of that nature. So this is kind of a combination of a lot of those other things where you get to talk about each level. And then interfaces. There was a lot on that interface section that I showed at the beginning of this video. And this is just how things look in your game and so forth, all right? Mostly geared towards HUDs and information you give to the players. So let's talk about this. Visual systems. Are there any systems that need to be displayed to the player? Uh, audio. Uh, this can be broken down into sound effects, background music, and so forth. Uh, are there is the audio queuing up the player? Like, especially if it's a boss battle coming up or something like that, right? So th those are important cues to also understand. Is there some sort of help system uh, that guides you through or it allows you to activate to make a certain thing easier to do or to review or, you know, things like that? Uh, target hardware, that's 
very important. And uh, I put it in this section, but you could also take it out if you wanted to. Uh, just talks about, well, well, where do you want this game? Like, is it just for Steam? Is it PC only? Are you looking for Mac as well? Are you trying to do mobile, uh, PS5, 4, Switch, right? A uh, lot of options, Xbox Live, right? So this is where you kind of talk about that. That way then you can talk about the hardware itself. And if you're gonna utilize the hardware uh, in any uh, way that is different in a game. So for example, using uh, the gyroscope on a mobile phone to, you know, move around objects in your in your world or something like that. If that's something you want to do, you want to put it in this section. And then key assets is just the generalization that we do uh, that just anything else that is important in your game. Uh, icons, player stuff, uh, anything that is visual that you need to make sure we cover in the game and have made okay so you can break that down to uh, assets of development site as well if you wanted to but uh, i always keep it general at this point all right so some tips and tricks and so forth uh there's a lot of stuff that i just covered and it is something that is going to take some time to go through and write what i always like to say is make your first pass and try to add as much info you as you can on whatever it, uh, items we covered and then just go from there and slowly when you are working on a level and you're like hey oh this is great i need to realize i got to work on this and do this you go back to the document and you just keep adding okay and you're not going to have all the answers right away and for the amount of time you need like, let's say you want to give yourself a month or uh, a year or two weeks to make the game. Like, this document will uh, help keep you organized, but it may not be as full as a game that takes a lot longer. Because then it requires more work, more organization, and so forth. So, just, you know, remember to always come back to this. And if it gets a little extra in any one of these categories just add a link to a new page. So if you did this on Google Docs or something like that, link it to another Google Doc. Uh, that way then you could go into that and just talk about one particular piece. That way this game design document is kind of like that, okay, overview of the entire game. And I could go through this and a new person can go through this without having to find out like, how do I get to the parts that I need to understand first? before I dive deeper into all the other documentation you may have for the game, all right? So overall, this is kind of how you get that game design document started. There's a lot of things that were in here. Uh, don't be overwhelmed and just know that you're just adding one thing at a time, all right? So good luck to you guys and uh, thank you and I'll see you in the next video.